Um, so we're just gonna go around and kind of share our stories about how we got started and you know what we did to get our first jobs. Um, on the panel today, we have me, Dylan Chunachai. I'm a freelance illustrator and concept artist from LA. Um, I do illustrations, concept, and storyboards, and I also work on movie posters for TV and films. Um, I also am the co-founder of Resolution Art and this Discord. Next, we have Chelsea Bleck, a published illustrator and viz dev artist from LA. She's currently working as a visual development artist at DreamWorks Animation on the upcoming feature, The Bad Guys. Chelsea previously worked with Tycho Studios, Wild Canary Animation, and Macmillan Publishing. She is also the co-founder of Resolution Art and this Discord. I suspect most of you are here for her. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Who do we have next? Camille Rodriguez, VizDev artist and motion designer from LA. Camille recently started working at Sony Pictures Animation. She's also previously worked at Buck, Netflix, and have done matte paintings for Disney theme parks. And once again, we have Yi Hao Shu, concept artist and illustrator, currently working for Epidus with clients including Riot Games and Tencent. Yi Hao also took our mentorship last year, so he's he's doing pretty good. And Caroline's joining us today as well, background designer at Titmouse Animation. She's previously worked for Shadow Machine, Jumpstart Games, and has freelance for Starburns and Wizard to the Coast. And we also have Alex Henderson, concept artist and illustrator currently going to Art Center and interning at Riot Games. He's also done work for DreamWorks, Spin Master, and Apple. And special guest today is Lanny Murkowski. Lanny's a storyboard artist at Famous Frame. He's done a variety of works, ranging from concepts and finished illustration. And Lanny, you recently just did work for the League of Legends Pentakill concert, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for the, thanks for the intro. <laughs> yeah. Um, are we missing anybody? That's it, right? I cool. think we got everybody, yeah. So, um, let's first talk about how we first got into this. Like, did you guys all go to art school? Right? Like, should we go around the circle and I maybe... Think, yeah, we should take turns, probably. Who wants to go first? Nobody. Caroline. I guess I can. Caroline, where'd yeah, you go to school, Caroline? Uh, I went to USC as a fine arts major. At the time that I went, I didn't even really want to get into animation. Oh, no. Did your mic cut out? Is Caroline cutting out for you guys? It's your Wi-Fi. Ah. Uh, oh, better. I knew. It's better. Yeah. It's <laughs> Okay. I like adjusting my headphones for a second. Okay. Um, yeah, sounds good. Okay, do I start over? No. Uh, you went to USC for fine arts? Yep. And um, you didn't really, you weren't really trying to get into animation? Yeah, I was trying to get into games. Oh, I see. And when you graduated, did you find work right away? No. <laughs> my portfolio was not ready. <laughs> like, at all. It was bad. <laughs> and so how, how long before you, or what did you do right after graduation? Okay. I guess if we're uh, starting from the beginning, I was, I graduated a uh, semester early to, and I took classes at CDA and I was living with my parents and they wanted me to get a job. There was literally any job. So <laughs> I did. I got a job at this bookstore called Stuart Books. I was probably working like maybe. Oh, that's pretty. Like 
that's a famous bookstore for, for yeah artists. well it, it happened to be pretty close to where i live and i i kind of just walked in there with my resume it's like are you hiring and he i guess he was willing to hire me and mm. so i was working there like part time like but it was probably about like 30 hours a week or something and, mm -hmm. um I would be taking art classes at CDA on weekends, like driving from Torrance to Pasadena each way, working after work and stuff like that. And then you were still trying to get into games at this time? Yeah, so I was like applying the um, games jobs this whole time. And I would, after that, I was able to get an offer at a Jumpstart Games. That's like this art coordinator, intern type person. So I wasn't really like an artist there. I did convince them to like let me do art for their mm. games, but my official title was basically coordinator type person. And then while I was working so part time at Jumpstart Games, um, I was still taking classes at CDA on the weekends and like doing the homework after work mm -hmm. and spending like all my weekends working on my portfolio, my fundamentals and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, eventually I ended up getting laid off from a uh, jumpstart at oh. the end of my contract. Mm. Like in December of 20, uh, 2019, yeah. 2019. It was like, when yeah, when it was, did you graduate college? Oh, I graduated in uh, I guess December 2016. And okay, I was at so stewarding books later. for about I was at stewarding books for like about six months. So mm -hmm. and I was there from uh, like 2017 or jeez, I'm like getting my time mixed so. up. I'm pretty sure I was only there for like six months because I got hired spring, at Jumpstart, I think, spring mm. of 2018. So, and then after that, uh, yeah, I got laid off at December 2020. And then I was unemployed and taking art tests and stuff like that for pretty much the entire pandemic. How, the entire uh... pandemic. How many jobs did you apply to, and how many artists, artists did you do? <laughs> if you guys um, don't know Caroline, Caroline, um, I wrote a posted, Twitter thread about yeah. it too. Um, I, I guess between I was applying to like games and art jobs like the entire time. Um, while I was at Jumpstart, I I was kind of like, I'm not really sure if games is for me because I wasn't making a lot of money. And I wanted to move out of my parents' house. So uh, I was kind of applying the whole time. So it's like that. But between December 2020, or like or actually November 2020, because that was when they told me I was going to lose my job. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I actually got hired, it was probably like 120 something job application. Oh my God. Um, Dylan, you've already heard the story. Yeah, I know, but just just for everybody else, in in a span of how long is this? Um, maybe like I guess eight months. So less than a year, 120 jobs you applied to. Yeah, um, it was like I said, it wasn't just an animation; it was also like other games and stuff too. But yeah. it was mostly animation, and then for art tests. Uh, I'm like trying to pull it up on my computer because I don't quite remember <laughs> how many I've say, taken. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, Caroline. Um, the do you remember when you wrote that tweet? Because I'm looking for it right now. To, to oh, and, um, do you remember like I mean, what month? It was like a few months ago, earlier okay. this year. Keep um, I think someone, I think someone like retweeted it recently. So. Maybe if I 
notifications i'll find it so just for everybody else here sorry. <laughs> i've already heard most of the stories here but we wanted to do this panel because the people in here has the most ridiculous stories yeah. about how they got started and it's kind of inspiring to me to hear this well, you know what? I'm going to go look for the bread later, but I'll just see how many art tests I've taken. So my yeah, first keep, art keep test... Keep talking, Caroline, and Chelsea, if you don't I mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my first art test, um, I got it from Disney TV animation. It was for Amphibia Season 2. It was a background painting test. At the time, I was working at Jumpstart Games. I was also taking King Lee's class at CDA at the same time. So I was already kind of dying. And then I got this art test and then I spent like 30 freaking hours on this art test, even though they definitely didn't tell me to spend that much time, but I did and I didn't pass. But uh, and then the day after I turned in that test, like another, or, no, the same day, like two hours after I turned it in, like I got an email from like Floyd County Productions asking if I want to test for them. <laughs> um, so anyway, one, two so two tests in 2019 then three four five six seven how many eight, eight. art tests did you get paid for oh um well there was this one art test for like this video game like co-op studio then uh Canada they had me take a test and they paid me like $25 an hour to take it which is extremely generous of them I guess because no one else paid me for I never got paid for any of my other tests but but yeah I think it's like seven or something I guess it might be like eight if you count out like co-op uh but I did not pass a single one. <laughs> and then, anyway, though, like, I was applying to jobs the whole time. And I was also, like, talking to people on Discord and Twitter and stuff. But eventually, um, I got an email from Shadow Machine. And this was supposed to be for my first gig. It's still a little crazy, honestly, because I did the interview and. And I got, I had a referral from uh, some, someone who I did not know. They were like, oh, this lady named, like, Samanda referred you. And I was kind of like, who the fuck's Samanda? But anyway, I'll, I'll do the interview. And I did it. And I didn't get the job. But then, and actually, a friend of mine got it instead. And then a month later, they reached out to me again, asking about um, if I was willing to interview for the BG design position because um, another layout on the artist on the team left. And I think they forgot that they had already interviewed me. So I reminded them. And then like two hours later, they just gave me the job. Yep. Also, where did, oh. where did Dylan and Chelsea go? Um, I, their power went out actually. So, You're um, kidding me. So they said, they said to keep going. Uh, oh, okay. But, um, I guess we can, they're, they're going to try and figure that out, but they said, you know, that we can keep going. I, I can, oh, okay. I can talk about, I can talk next if, if you guys want. Yeah, sure. But anyway, it was a very long and windy journey. For, for All me. right. Wow. Like you, you had definitely had like a lot of tests. Well, I, I'm curious as to like your mental state by like getting rejected so often. Was, was it like, cause I know that can bring a lot of people down. How was that for you? Um, it sucks. Uh, I only really got upset when I, like, made it past first, first or second round, you know? Like, if I made it to the interview, or if I made it to the, like, the test or whatever, and I put a lot of work into it, then, like, when I got rejected, it was always really, really, uh, upsetting for me. Mm. Yeah, I don't right. know. It's a dark period of my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, uh... My, like that's pretty interesting uh because we definitely all 
have different experiences around that, but it, it never feels good to get like a rejection. But once you start, like for me, it's like when I started getting rejected, it's like, uh, okay, I guess this is just a part of it, right? And you kind of get to learn that. You do get used to it, I think. Yeah. Sure. You kind of like, when you apply to a lot of stuff, then you stop getting like emotionally attached mm. to like any one specific person, I feel. Mm hmm. All right. So. Who wants to go next? I guess you can go next, Alex. Uh, sure. So I guess like the first question is kind of about like school. So I'll talk that I'm I'm currently going to Art Center, College of Design, and uh, but as you can tell, I've had some work experience, and um, I think that that had to do with just me, uh, like in the middle of my Art Center career, uh. I started realizing that I had friends that were graduating um, and they weren't getting jobs and they were, we have this big grad show at when we graduate that recruiters come and they come and look at everybody's work and a lot of people bank their, um, uh, them getting a job off of the graduation. And I saw that people were kind of putting all their uh, marbles into that basket and hoping to get something at the end. But uh, a lot of people would be let down. So I would just saw this like kind of as a pattern. People would be like, oh, I'm not getting a job and I just graduated. Like, and, and I just kept seeing that as a consistent thing. So I, and I didn't want that to happen to me. So I basically just asked myself what was next in terms of like, how will I get that job? Um, like even before I graduate so that I'm set, like how can I make the next step to, to get there because my school isn't going to help me get there, right? Um, so, so I mean, they, they'll teach you skills, but they won't, like, they're not the ones that's going to get you the job, right? So I think around the middle of my art center career, I kind of took some breaks uh, from school and started saying, okay, how can I learn more? And I, that's when I looked to, like, brainstorm or CDA and started taking some mentorships. I took one with Armand Serrano at that time. And I just took some classes of things that I'd be interested in, kind of trying to find out what I really liked. Um, and I, I kind of settled on, like, background and, like, biz dev. Um, and, yeah, and so, so I just started working on my own projects while kind of at school. And, and there, there ended up being this talk at school from DreamWorks, and you could apply for a portfolio review. I think they only took, like, 10 people. It was through my school. Um, so I applied for it. I was able to get a portfolio review from like a recruiter, and and the they they looked at the work and it was after I'd done like a bunch of projects. So um, they looked at the work and they were like, "Yeah, this is great." Like they were they were commenting on kind of layout of portfolio and stuff and saying, "Yeah, but the work is like it's really great." Um, and at the end, I felt disappointed because. Um, because I didn't ask for their contact info. And, and something that I've learned from other professionals that you, you kind of want to do a little bit more and reach out, to, uh, reach out to recruiters and kind of make that contact. So at the end of my uh, portfolio review, I forgot to ask for their, uh, the recruiters that were, were looking at my work, I forgot to ask for their contact info, their, their like LinkedIn. So I stayed two hours after because I was one of the first people that got a portfolio review. I stayed two hours until all the portfolio reviews were done so I could catch them before they left. And I said, uh, like, I went up to them and I was like, hey, I just want to thank you guys for uh, being here. I really appreciate you guys looking at our work and, and giving your time to be here. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that, uh, give you guys a thank you and thank you personally. And if there's any way I can contact you after this, maybe we could exchange emails. And they're like, yeah, that, that's totally great. Um, and, then, and then we uh, had exchanged contact info. And then I didn't just stop there. Later that night, I connected with them on LinkedIn. I looked them up and I found them. And then I sent them an, another message saying how grateful I was that they were there. So I really think that that uh, led to my first job because... Uh, they they ended up putting me on a talent list um, at DreamWorks, and when they 
they are looking for people to hire, they look at that talent list first. Um, and they somehow found me and then they contacted me for a freelance, like I think a couple months later. So yeah, that's a little story on how, you know, going the extra mile and, and showing them that you really care kind of did help me. So yeah. Pretty crazy. <laughs> I feel the portfolio of your desperation, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So, yeah, is there who who wants to go next? Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah, I we, can hear you now. Well, Why is still. Chelsea talking though? Yeah, it's not. Doing it. <laughs> it's on my laptop because I have um, a laptop that was already charged. So our PCs that on the squad here. This is, I, mean, I guess you could do it from your phone. Power is going out. Um, yeah, we're just making this more interesting for everybody. <laughs> I'm sad that we missed a part of it and it's not going to be recorded. But I mean, well, we'll kind of set up a recording for after. All good. I just gave the spiel of how I, you know, got my got my first job. So yeah. Has, has Camille gone yet? No. Go for it. Okay. I don't really know where to start. Um, where did you go to school? Oh, where did I go to school? From the very, very beginning. <laughs> you were born I was nine like... years old. Oh, not that. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I started with my first box of crayons. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, let's see. I... My my story is kind of like everybody has a different story. Mine is much more windy. I feel like than most. I I have like switched careers a few times. Um, mm. So I would say that I went. I did go to school for illustration, and at the time, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but there was none of this. Like uh, the only thing that was like probably outside the traditional brick and mortar school system was like massive black and the atelier. You know, like those old school things that. I don't even know if they're around anymore or if they're that big anymore. But like Carla Ortiz came out of that and uh, Jason Chan came out of that. A lot of big name concept artists came out of that at that time. That was kind of the only thing. And it was uh, really hard to get into. And where I was at the time, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was in school. I was kind of like just trying everything. My approach to art school was, I went to the Academy of Art in San Francisco, by the way. Um, I got, I always knew I was going to go to art school. So in high school, I kind of like, probably by the time I was a junior, I completely stopped doing any math. <laughs> I like stopped doing anything that I didn't want to do anymore because I knew I was going to art school. And I was working on my portfolio through AP Art and everything like that. I got an, a scholarship to go to uh, the Academy of Art. Um, and I even started early in the summer. But because of, of the fact that it was very unfocused track, like I just had a broad illustration track um i had like no portfolio to show for it when i came out like literally nothing i had like some figure drawing stuff i had like a few random watercolor paintings but none of it was was good and none of it was useful so you know i had i had like a, a hard time in school too like i had a family member die and i had to stop going to school for a while so i had to support myself and i took a year off so that kind of played a part in it as well like i was kind of floundering all through that time period. Um, <laughs> I've had so many jobs, like uh, during college I was a dog groomer, so I learned very early how to, how to survive because I had so many challenges at that point. Um, just getting any job was, was really just my goal. And I was just taking kind of any scrap illustration freelance jobs I could get for a while. I got a few, um, but I realized pretty soon that I needed to figure out you know, how to make myself a professional working artist that wasn't just taking scraps and working a desk job. Um, so I decided to go to school again. Um, I wanted to go to a completely different state, get out of my, you know, home state and kind of just explore other industries. Um, you know, at the time I had always loved animation, but there was really no exposure to what it meant to work in animation. Like a VizDev program didn't exist. Um, so I, you know, I, I, that kind of just was like a pie in the sky dream at the time. I had no idea how to do that. So I was like, I'll just get whatever I can. Motion graphics at the time was coming kind of a trendy job. 
Um, it was like graphic designer, but a little bit fancier. <laughs> so I, I thought I would try that. There was some really cool studios coming up at the time, like Buck and Psyop, that I, uh, you know, felt like had a really interesting merge of of animation and illustration. That These I felt like I could look like like design studio ad studios, right? Say that again. Uh, like Buck and Psyop, these are all like design studio, motion graphic studios, right? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, I'm not sure how they would have positioned themselves because they kind of do everything like at this point they do product design they do interactive design they do um but i think their bread and butter is mostly like commercial spots and uh um recently they started doing i think buck recently had a they, they did like the title credits for um, some animation yeah. show so they, they they're mostly commercial shop um that does stuff like that but they have some really amazing artists there that i had you know, become aware of, and I thought, you know, I could, this is probably a style that I could figure out how to do, and, um, you know, learning After Effects, it's a technical skill, I could probably just go to school and pick that up pretty, you know, pretty quickly. So, I basically took whatever savings I had, which was not much, and I um, applied to school in New York, never been there before, didn't have any family there at all. Um, I was like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> I got into Parsons, and, um, I found an apartment, moved in with randos, Wait, sight unseen. You went because you were trying to do all of these jobs and then you decided to go back to school again? Yeah, so my thinking at the time was that I needed to expand my skill set. Mm -hmm. Like illustration had, my illustration knowledge had failed me. Yeah. So I felt like I needed to, and there was not really anything else for me to grasp onto. So I needed to learn a different skill set that would still allow me to work as an artist. Yeah. So I thought motion graphics was the way to go. I went to Parsons. I uh, got a master's there in New York. Once again, you know, long story short of surviving and struggling through school while supporting my, myself um, as a motion designer. I, I was able to get a few um, internships at the entry level while I was in school, sort of like Alex. It took me until grad school to learn that lesson, to start trying to find work early. Like, don't wait until you graduate. I made that mistake as an undergrad. I just thought, like, you go to art school, you get a job. You know, it's like McDonald's, right? You just you put her and you get a job. But it doesn't work like that for most of us. Um, anyway, after I finished grad school, I jumped into motion graphics. I worked in that field for, um, for, for a few years. But I kind of always found myself more leaning towards illustration and like whenever I got a motion job, I would always push for being part of the storyboarding and keyframe illustration team. That was just what I gravitated to. And I realized that, uh, you know, at a certain point, I, I really wanted to spend my time doing that instead of pushing keyframes. Um, it was paying the bills, but it wasn't fulfilling me. So while keeping a day job and, you know, surviving in New York City, I decided to, at this time, there was more online resources. So I decided to invest in myself and uh, pick up some mentorships and things like that. And that's what really turned the corner for me. Working in a vacuum is never going to get you anywhere, at least in my experience, because I felt like I was doing great work. And <laughs> when I got my first mentor, he's like, we're going to scrap all of this. Um, so you think that, like, the thing that kept you away from getting work was, like, the lack of skill or what? I think it's twofold. I think it's definitely the lack of skill, but it's the lack of exposure. You just don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, part of it was the the lack of um, scaffolding in my education system because there was no biz dev track. There was no like, there was no tangible goal to reach for that I that I could understand, um, and I didn't know anybody in biz dev. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that putting yourself out there and really like like now there's so many resources. Like there's really. Uh, you know, an endless amount of resources for, for people to, to reach out for. But I think that the, the main thing to take away from this part of my story is that you have to be willing to put yourself out there and just try new things and explore. Because um, a lot of the times you're not really going to know what you do, what you want to do until you start doing something. I know a lot of people in here are students and they're probably like, should I do A? Should I do B? Should I study this? Should I go for this job? Um, you can waste a lot of time in that headspace. Yeah. I, think, I think that once you realize that 
you, you know, I know that there's a such an, a sense of urgency a lot of the time. I definitely feel that. But you, uh, once I realize that just because you close one door for now doesn't mean you can't come back to it later. You know, I kind of closed the door for animation mentally because I didn't know that I could ever do that. But I found my way there through all these other things. And now, oh, I, how how did you get into animation? Um, let's see. So at this point. From me today, from graduating and getting like my first job in the industry, I would say my first industry job isn't the Sony job. I think the corner turned for me when I went, when I got that Disney job and I was doing matte paintings for a show because I was working with Disney alumni and like some of the best artists in the business to do this show. And I think that that was like the, the corner that turned for me for um, realizing that I could do this, that I, uh, uh, you know, I had the skill set and, um, you know, my work was good enough to to get these kind of jobs. How I got that job, I, I think I just applied for it. I just applied for it on like an art station thing. And it was a long interview process. It was like two months of interviews. It was really intense. Oh. Um, but and because it was like a high profile job, it hasn't even been the show hasn't even released yet because of COVID. But the the portfolio that I had that, that got me that job was what I worked on in my free time after work every single night and all through weekends for probably about two years with that first mentor that I meant that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, it was just about like really putting in the time of exposing myself and working with professionals and building a portfolio that was marketable for for the industry. And then from there, that one portfolio carried me for, you know, from other jobs to the point that, you know, now now working at Sony, I had built my portfolio up a little bit more since then, but basically with Sony, it was, it was, I don't even want to say it like this because it was so easy. Like I, it was easy and it wasn't because I had actually interviewed with Sony a few times at Lightbox and at CTN. Like I literally had an interview with Sony like every single day at the first Lightbox and I'd never heard from them after that. Yeah. So I was like, what, what is going on? <laughs> like they clearly like my work. Why are they? And then at CTN again, uh, I had interviews with them again. So I was like, what is going on? They like my work. Why don't they just hire me? Um, so now this year, they, they, they just emailed me asking me if I was available. There was no test. There was no, not even really an interview. Like the, the first time I talked to them, I thought it was an interview, but it wasn't. It was just like, here's the project. Here's the pitch. Um, can you start? <laughs> because my work had gotten to a level that they, that they found would fit in their project. And I think that that's a big misconception too, when you find that your work, you know, that you probably feel like you have good work, but you're still not getting jobs. It may be that you just aren't in the right place yet. Yeah. You know? Well, people are always looking at you. They're always looking at your work. Every time you apply to a job, put a test in, you know, it, it plants a seed for something later. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably all I'm gonna say about that. I guess to segue off that like real fast, um, whenever I got to the point where I actually talked to a human being, so not like an auto rejection, like a never hearing back thing, but um, when I got rejected, I would ask to, for like feedback on like, an art test, or I would ask to keep in touch if I could send them portfolio updates, and then, uh, you know, if they say yes, then most of the time they do, then, like, you know, just send them updates every couple of months or so, and sort of stay in their mind. But you actually have to update your portfolio, though. You can't just, like, email them and be like, hey, what's up? Right. I don't have anything new to share, but, you know, just saying hi. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Every time... <laughs> Go ahead. Um, every time that you, like, email a recruiter, like it is necessary to have a new date on your portfolio it looks really bad if you're still bugging them with the same work because they're just going to start ignoring you. Mm -hmm. yeah um and we go next because our internet is spotty <laughs> we, <laughs> we think chelsea and i should go next just so because we might cut out again um, Chelsea, you want to go? Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, 
So for me, um, I also had kind of a, I don't know, I had a pretty bumpy road to um, getting into the industry. I went to Cal State Long Beach. I touched on this a little bit in our last panel. Um, graduated with a BFA in illustration and was really set on doing animation, but because of where I went to school, it was a, it was an editorial illustration portfolio. So I was completely naive and I started applying to Nickelodeon and Disney and all that with an illustration portfolio. And I got a rude awakening that nobody wanted to hire me. Um, so you knew you wanted to work in animation? I did, yeah. Um, but I was not savvy on the internet with art. I was not in the loop in our community. The only people I knew were, you know, the students that were around me. And if you guys don't already know, Dylan and I went to school together. So, like, I knew him. And um, that was helpful because he kind of had, like, an idea of this other, like, art world that I wasn't aware of that was on the internet. Um, and I... It started to very quickly realize after graduation that I was very, I started doing what we're all told to do is network. <laughs> so I had connections at Nickelodeon and I went and toured the studio. I met art directors. Um, I, you know, had somebody actually tell me, oh, will hire you on my next show here and I was super stoked and I was like yes I'm getting in and then I went home and I, I just never heard back from anybody and I actually decided that I was going to stop the network game because um, up to par and that's the sad reality of it. They just didn't need me because I didn't have anything to offer really. Um, so I went back to the drawing board literally and I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop applying for jobs. I did kind of a similar thing that Caroline did with like, I applied for probably like a hundred jobs. And I went back and I was like, okay, I'm going to my little hole and I'm going to just grind. And I'm gonna do as much art and learn as much about the animation industry and visual development as I can. And um, I was lucky because at the time I just graduated college and I moved back in with my parents down in San Diego and they didn't make me pay any rent. So I was able to just kind of go into my room and like just close the door and just do work. And um, that grind for me, I said a little bit about this already on the Discord, but that grind for me looked like basically around five days a week. I was getting up um, in the morning doing art all day till the time I went to bed. And then around two to three days a week, I was hanging out with family or friends. And um, it was very monotonous. And I kind of lost my social life for a good two years. And um, two years was actually the goal that I gave myself. Um, I told myself that if I didn't get a job in the animation industry in two years, I was going to do something drastic and just like get something, like get any job. So I actually ended up getting into the animation industry in two and a half years. So it was close, but not exact. Around this time though, you were uh, doing freelance, like illustration jobs yeah um the two years before that i that my two-year grind was basically like it was a lot of different stuff like um i was working mainly on i was working on foundation which is the most important thing i will always say um and then i was also doing this thing where i was doing a painting per week so every week i would have a finished painting and that was a slow way of doing things because you shouldn't be working that one piece but at the same time I really enjoyed it and because of doing that I started getting attention from editorial people like 
I got jobs from Airbnb, I got Playboy, uh, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan Publishing, like all these like book publishing places or whatever and articles and stuff. And that was actually what I went to school for in the first place. So it was a natural um, transition into that basically, but it wasn't what I really wanted to do. I still wanted to do animation. So I just kind of kept working at it. So I technically, during that grind, I kind of was a freelance editorial illustrator basically for that time, even though it wasn't like my like big goal. Um, as far as getting into animation from there, I just kind of kept going on my portfolio. And I think a turning point for me was going to an art center uh, grad show. And I remember going in there and thinking that it was vastly different from my own grad show. It was such good work. And I had no idea that it was that people had to be this good to get into the industry and I was like oh okay so this is what I should be doing and so I emulated um a couple girls that were in that show and I looked at their portfolios and I kind of like used the same format that they did on their portfolio and I came up with my own project and it was called Good Boy Sushi which we talked about last night and um I picked my favorite animal which is um a dog so i picked a shiba and then i picked my favorite movie my an favorite animated movie which is ratatouille and um i kind of mixed it together and i came up with this little silly story about a shiba that's a sushi chef and um that project carried me into every single job that i've had like to now so I made that project and I got an interview um, at Wild Canary Animation. And I got that job because I applied on Twitter, actually. And it's funny because the person that posted the job on Twitter was actually one of the girls who I was looking at at the Art Center show. So she ended up getting me my first job in animation. And I ended up working with a lot of the girls that I had emulated at Art Center. And they're my friends now. So it was kind of a funny way how things worked out. But um, yeah, so I had that job. And then um, I don't know how far I should go into this. Um, but it left, it didn't work out. I lived and it didn't work out. Um, and that was around the time that the first light box came around. And um, I basically, again, was jobless and I didn't know what to do. But at least now I had Disney Junior on my portfolio and I had, you know, the Good Boy Sushi in my portfolio. So I decided that at Lightbox, I was going to hustle as much as I could to get work. And I printed out, um, or I got a booth at Lightbox. I was fortunate enough to get a booth at the first one. Um, I printed out a bunch of books, like portfolio books, basically. And I left my booth one day at the expo and I hit every single studio booth in the studio area. I went up to every single person and I was like, hey, here's my work, hey, here's my work. And I handed them my portfolio book rather than a business card because people don't care about your business card <laughs> as much as something that is kind of like more tangible. Like you don't feel bad throwing away a business card, but you're gonna feel bad throwing away a book. And that was kind of my mentality on how I was gonna get people to see my work and get my work into like an art director's hands. and. That's exactly how I got um, my job that I have now at DreamWorks working on the bad guys. Um, the recruiter at DreamWorks at their table was like, oh, this, this is great work. Like, I'll, I'll hand this over. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up getting two interviews. I interviewed for um, this movie that just came out and then uh, the bad guys that's coming out in April next year. So ended up on bad guys and in between that I worked for Tyco Studios and they saw my work at Lightbox too so um that's kind of my like 
trajectory into where I am now. But yeah. Sorry, that was really long. A lot of stuff happening. Really long, yeah. I did not have this when uh, I went to real Real quick, though. Time. I think it's important to also mention with Chelsea, like she said that she saw the work that she needed, the level she needed to get to, and that changed everything for her. I think that's really important to, because we, we always talk about you shouldn't compare yourself to other artists, but if you are not getting work, you need to. You need to understand why you're not getting the work and what's missing, how to fill those gaps in. Um, not necessarily to be to say that you want to be like them or copy them, but just you have to understand what it is about their work and their skill level that you're missing. Yeah, and it's it's not only the skill level, but the type of work, right? Because like, like Chelsea, you were getting illustration work, but you were not getting studio animation work. Yeah, so I do want to say like a lot of my um, influences at the beginning were um, like Kevin Dart and Jasmine Lay and a lot of the Chromosphere people. Um, I also went to school with Jenny Yu, if you guys know her um and like we're good friends and she was a big inspiration to me too our art looks basically the same <laughs> and um so yeah it, it definitely i mean and jenny's not even in, in animation she's in what like technically game so it it all depends on like i mean you can go into so many different things depending on what your work looks like um, somebody also in the chat, I just said, so connections, they said, so connections really matter. Um, connections matter, but don't get confused that it will matter more than the work. The work will always matter more because the connections don't really get you anywhere if your work is not good. And I know this from experience because people really, so when I would go to sketch meetups, I experienced um, people not giving a crap who I was until my work started getting better and that was something that was kind of annoying to deal with but um at the same time i think it's natural in the industry that like we want to know people that have yeah no i i think it was i mean i i think I mean, there's a common theme here with like all of us that is, you, you, it's not easy to get in. Um, and a lot of it is just not really knowing what to do. It's a lot of luck too, because I, I see it too as like the, the DreamWorks job that I got that I have now, like that was, I think, luck and I feel, or par partially luck. And they say too, like, what is it? Like luck is when, um, it's opportunity. Preparation means opportunity. Like I will say I was lucky in getting that at Lightbox because, you know, I handed her my portfolio and she passed it on to Luke. You did all the preparation. But I did the preparation and it was an opportunity that I seized and it worked out because my work was good. Because I had worked all that time. And um real quick I wanted to some can in the self care channel. Um I think it was something about like how I mentally got through the grind years. Um, the, the grind for me was very difficult. Um, it looks different for everybody, and I don't want to like promote grinding because it's not, I think, the healthiest way. But for me, I graduated with thousands in debt from my student loans, so I had no choice but to do that. Um, I personally deal with depression and anxiety like on like a daily basis. So that was a huge part of my process and like having to kind of like combat that with, you know, having to spend these long hours painting and drawing and everything. Um, I would say just like meditation helped me a lot. Exercise helped me a lot. I took a lot of supplements that were good for mental health, like staying active, even though like as artists, we're just glued to our desks. Um, and then having like a good base as far as like a community and like, I mean, I lost my social life that two years and the people that stuck around are, you know, my true friends. And um, I just didn't see them as much during that time, which I think is fine. It 
was necessary at the time. But um, just really like keeping yourself in check and not getting too like unmotivated and don't rely on motivation either. Rely on discipline because you're probably not going to feel motivated every day or inspired. So that would be my advice on the mental part of it. So true. But uh, actually, can I say something about something you said earlier, Chelsea? Yeah. Some, something that Chelsea said earlier was like, that really helped me too, was like that you had like a goal, right? Like, and just to be able to have like a tangible like timeline, I feel like really helped me because before, um, before I had a goal, I would just submit stuff and like expect to like get something and then I'd be really let down. But that was like very unrealistic, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like just saying, okay, like when, when I kind of decided I wanted to do the thing, or, like to, to work and really figure things out, I was like, all right, in a year, I want like an internship. And that really ha like helped like to s not put pressure on like me all the time. It's like, okay, I can refer to that like long-term goal, right? Or like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Yeah, I can yeah. see that you had that too. So like just ha being able to have that timeline and kind of rely on it, it took some of the pressure off, but also put more discipline in there at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even with like, um, as far as like the timeline of things, like if you guys are feeling like people in the audience or whatever, like if you guys are feeling discouraged or whatever, like the, I do want to note that like the day before that I got my first job in animation at Wild Canary, I remember calling my mom and being like, why am I doing this anymore? Like I, I've been going for two years and I haven't, I can't get in. Like I can't freaking get in. And it felt like hopeless. And literally the next day I got the call and they were like, hey, like, we want to bring you on as a background designer. And I mean, before that, I so like taken uh, a test for like Disney Junior or not Disney Junior, uh, for Disney for the Owl House for a color stylist. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to get this. And I did it and I didn't get the job. And I remember I spent like a good like. I don't know, like 30 minutes, like 15, 30 minutes, just like crying, feeling sorry for myself. And then I was like, whatever, I'll like do the next one. And I just picked myself back up and I was like, I'm going to keep going. So the people that will get the jobs in the end are the people that keep going. So just remember that if you don't stop, eventually you will get there. And I truly believe that. Yeah, I got used to think like especially like with like the first my first ever interview which coincidentally was the same job as Chelsea I mean, I interviewed for the same job <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't know each other at the time no we didn't I was following you on social media though that was how I found out I didn't get it <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> well Caroline you wouldn't have wanted it anyway because it was terrible <laughs> Anyway, what I want to jump on to that about, like, it was like, because I thought, okay, this is, like, my only chance to break in, like, this art test or this interview, because I have also failed interviews as well as art tests, like, of my career. But anyway. Um, we have a, tomorrow's talk is about all the yeah, failures. I know. If I, if I, talk, <laughs> get much, into if I talk too much about it, I won't have anything to say. Yeah. Any, or maybe I still will. It's been a lot. But anyway, um, you kind of learn that there isn't really like, oh, this is my only chance to break in. Like, another yeah. one will come along eventually. Like, if you just keep trying. And that's kind of yeah. you know, what, like, I've learned as well. Like, there will be another chance, even if it doesn't. We, we like mentioned it. this before that, like, if when you're not getting the job, sometimes it doesn't mean you're not good enough. It just means the job that fits you is not available yet, right? Like, I think there's all these, yeah, there's only so many movies made in a year that you, they can't hire everybody. And it's timing. A lot of it is timing. Yeah. Yeah. 
which is hard to again like the better you are the more opportunities are available mm -hmm. right because if you're at the lower level then you kind of have to like wait for whatever is available to you you're just kind of taking the scraps as opposed to because all the jobs go to the best people first yeah, that's another thing that I, I want to say is like, we think about this kind of like, we think about getting better at art as like the scale, like, oh, like I'm going to get a little better and a little better and a little better. And there's going to be like a job at this level and a job at this level. And like something that. It's no entry level job. The, the entry level jobs are like the trainee, like in animation, at least are like the trainee and like the internships and stuff. But um, as far as like who's getting the jobs, it's like, and this is something I experienced, like you get like pretty good and then you start getting you know these random little jobs and you're like okay cool i can take some freelance and stuff and kind of get by and then i noticed that i got a little better and then i didn't get any job that's weird why am i not getting anything and then i got better than that and i got to that pro kind of level and then freaking they flood in because that's where all the jobs are. They're all up here. Yes. <laughs> and you don't even like get there until you like kind of like dip your toe in there. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> right. And it sucks that, I mean, it's like, there's so many jobs and they're actually like looking for artists. Like right now, like DreamWorks is looking for artists. Like the jobs can't find artists and the artists can't find jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's this weird thing happening that is, you know, Hey, I just wanted to say quickly too, I also think it's important to think about, like we're talking about, you know, get better. Like I got better and then I didn't get jobs. We need to get better to get jobs. But mm. I think we also have to define a little bit like what better means because I mean, everybody yeah. needs to get better. We need better foundation. We need better skills. Like people in the industry are required to have a certain level of skills and we all need to get there. But if everybody just builds those skills, everyone also has the same set of skills and the same way of solving the same problems. And while it's important to get better and to build those skills and be up to the standard you need to be at, I also think it's important to find some type of voice yourself to make yourself stand out, to find your own way of solving problems to some extent that will, you know, set you aside and give people a reason to hire you over everybody else. 100%. You should have your own, like, unique uh, part of yourself in your portfolio and that's something that they, I mean we've been saying too is like because you have to stand out I think as far as like the getting better gauge I would say like foundation is a really good gauge like draw basic drawing skills can you draw a cube can you draw like a cube in perspective like from your head you should be able to do that if you want a job in animation you should be able to do that like it's it, there there's basic things that we have to know how to do that the job requires of us, at least for the animation industry, for visual development. Um, but as far as like, I mean, if it's like editorial illustration, it's a different set of rules, or maybe it's a different set of rules for games or whatever. But I, I do think foundation is a good gauge for getting better. But uh, I think instead of saying better, we should be saying more effective. Yeah. Because different jobs are looking for different things. Right? Like, even, I mean, the people in the room right now, we don't all have the same jobs. And does it mean one of us is better than the other? Like, no, it just means I fit this job. I'm more effective at accomplishing this task. And somebody else is going to be more effective at accomplishing a different task. And the job that you're looking for, how effective are you at doing that job that they're offering? Right? Like, if you're a matte painter and I'm looking for a storyboard artist, it doesn't matter how good you are. I'm not going to hire you. Right? Um, yeah. So not, not like, it's not a linear path of just being not good and then being better than somebody. It's yeah, a lot of different things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's a common, right? Like, I mean, it's, being good, being better, get get better, but it's really getting good. Yeah. Um, Dylan, you should you should talk about how you got in or how you got your job though. Since we're we're gonna try to I, I don't know how the speakers of you guys feel, but Dylan and I were thinking about going till um, six. 
if that was okay with you. If you guys have to go, that's okay. But we we want to get through everyone. Cool with that. Ehau and Lanny oh. still need to talk about how they broke in, by the way. I know. Ehau and Lanny need to go too, and Delta okay. needs to go, so I'm sorry. But... Oh, yeah, I'll go real quick. <laughs> I talk too much. After, I, I was actually doing art for a long time. I, I mentioned in the previous talk, like my dad was an artist. He did photo retouching, so he kind of knew about art and I kind of knew what was available, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And because I didn't know, I just kind of spent a lot of time doing a bunch of different things. And I wasted a lot of time doing that as well. Um, after high school, I didn't get into any college that I wanted to do. <laughs> and I think at the time, like you had to take an SAT and stuff like that. Like, I didn't. I didn't know what I was doing when I was in high school. So I went to a community college. I went to Santa Monica College, which Lanny also went to. That's how we started talking. Kind of ran and Moish. Moish was in here yesterday. Um, so I went to Santa Monica College and it's a community college and it's more of a fine art school. Yeah, yeah, it's in California. Um, and it was more focused on like oil paintings and sculptings and mostly gallery work. And then I enjoy that stuff. So I did a lot of that for a while. And that's kind of when I started taking a lot of figure drawing classes. And I enjoy that a lot. So I spent a lot of time, I took a lot of classes there. And because it was a community college, you can just sign up and repeat classes if you wanted to. So that's what I was doing. And at this time, I already knew about concept art. like i was on conceptart.org i know a lot of professionals the older guys we all have ties to conceptart.org that was kind of the only place online that was talking about this kind of thing so i was on there um i was watching youtube videos already like at the time like Nomen dvds had just came out or like feng zhu was starting his youtube channel um yeah, conceptart.org was an error, definitely. Um, so I kind of knew that that existed, and I dabbled, right? Like, I got myself a little ta tablet. It wasn't even Wacom. It was, like, some other brand. And, yeah, I was started doing digital painting, but also doing oil paintings. <laughs> I'm dating myself. I was really reading a chat. I should start reading a chat while I was talking. I'm really dating myself. <laughs> Um, and so I, I looked up to a lot of fine artists and illustrators, um, and at Santa Monica, there was actually, I was trying to get into art center and I knew I needed a good portfolio because I couldn't afford to go there. So I needed to get a scholarship. So I was really hoping that. I would get in and get a good scholarship so I could go. And I was taking this class. It's an acrylic painting class by Nathan Oda. And he had a previous student, which was, I'm getting, this is getting kind of long. I should get into all totally. this. Basically, Andrew Hem, which is a fine artist. He's an illustrator, fine artist. He does murals and oil paintings. He came to talk at Santa Monica and at the time he had just graduated from Art Center and he talked about how he used to go to Santa Monica and he transferred to Art Center and he got like full scholarship and all of this stuff so I was like oh that's the guy that I should like emulate right like he did exactly what I wanted to do and in that same class I was there was an older gentleman because it's a community college right like there's people that are just taking classes for fun and there's this older guy that he's like, yeah, I remember when Andrew was here taking classes. And every time I looked at him, he was always drawing something, like sketching in his moleskin. So I was like, I got to do exactly what Andrew did. <laughs> so I got myself a moleskin. I started drawing everywhere I go. And now here's the thing. I, has, I procrastinated and I never worked on a portfolio. So... Four years went by. I was full-time at Santa Monica for four years, and it's a community college. So they basically told me, you're not allowed to sign up for any more classes. 
because you took too many classes. So I had to transfer out. And at this point, I didn't have a portfolio. So I applied to Art Center. I got in, but I didn't get any scholarships. So I couldn't go. So another school that I got in was Cal State Long Beach, which is why this is how I ended up in Long Beach. And they had a really good illustration program. Again, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was like, illustration sounds good to me. So I went to Cal State Long Beach. And I was really disappointed that I didn't get to go to Art Center. So I told myself, like, okay, so if I'm not going to get the education that those guys are getting, at least I can work as hard as they work. And if you guys have heard anything about Art Center at the time, like, everybody that I talked to that went there was kind of saying, like, and I know there's Art Center people in here. You guys can confirm that, like, all they talked about was not how good the classes were or the teachers were. It was about how much work they were doing. It was always about, like, you didn't have time to do anything else, and we would stay up just doing work all the time. Like, that's all I ever heard, yeah. right? So I told myself, like, if I didn't, if I'm not getting the education, at least I can work as hard as they were. And that was something that, like, you know, like Ben used to say this, right? You can't decide to be the best, but you can decide to be hardworking. Mm-hmm. Like that's something that you can do today. So I did that, right? I was like, I'm, I don't have control over all these other things, but at least I can control myself and how much work I put into this. So that's what I started doing. I started working on my own portfolio. Um, I got a website. I put my work up and I was always updating it. I had a personal project going at the same time that I was doing schoolwork, you know, like most people just did homework at school and thought that was going to be enough. Like, no, I had to, I had my whole portfolio on the side. And it's also because, you know, Chelsea touched on this, like the program that we were in was not the program that was teaching us. It was an editorial illustration program. It was an amazing editorial illustration program and it was so good that when I got my editorial illustration job it was exactly what I had been prepared for so I do want to say that I got a really good editorial illustration education right but I wanted to get into the entertainment and they didn't teach us any of that so I worked on my own portfolio um I was also working part-time at like a retail store I worked at Aaron Brothers it was a frame shop I was working like 30 hours a week. So I did that. And on my downtime, I was just sitting in my room and do my art. And I was also getting a lot of small commissions and illustration. Like first it started small and it was kind of like, you know, book cover. I mean, uh, like somebody's t-shirt company, like a friend of a friend or like, you know, somebody won an album cover, you know, those like high school friends that started a band, right? We all, we've all done those jobs. So I was doing that, but I, I kept going. And I, each time I got those jobs, I was like delivering, I was over delivering what they expected because I just, I wanted to be a working artist so bad, right? So I, I got to stop reading the chat because I'm just laughing at all the comments. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna. Yeah, don't. Um, so the small freelance jobs, they started getting bigger and bigger. It was starting to get, you know, I did a children's book, like a whole book, and they pay me like a thousand dollar. And at the time, like a thousand dollar while I was like working minimum wage at a retail store was like a big deal. That was like a whole month worth of like salary that I was getting, you know. So I took the job. I did the children's book. And then I was getting some like spot illustration work. So I was making enough money from just those small freelance job that was like, it was more than what my retail job was paying me. So I quit my retail job and I'm like, I'm going to be an artist full time now and I'm just going to do this. So that's what I was doing. And I was still going to school at the time. And this is the, the first studio job I got was I was actually. I went into um, the head of illustration department at Cal State Long Beach, Robin Richardson. 
she, I knew that she was doing like costume design for films and some storyboards here and there. So it was one of the few professors at school that actually had experience working in the movie industry. So I didn't have her class. So she didn't know my work, but I went up to her and I was like, Hey, Robin, can I like drop by to your office hours and show you my portfolio? And she's like, sure. Yeah. So next day I went in and I showed her my work and she was kind of like, what are you trying to do? And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, well, you're pretty good. And then she was like, you know what? Do you want a job right now? And I was like, what? Like, of course, what do you mean? Like, I've been doing this. Of course I want a job. And there was a, an, a Cal State Long Beach alumni that started a, a design studio and he was looking for interns. He's an, he's an older guy, like the company's really old, but he was looking for an intern and he had reached out to her. So she was like, you want this job? And I was like, yeah, please. So she recommended me. And then I went and I met up with him and I had an interview and it went great. But my schedule at school didn't really line up with like what they needed. And they, I, I would call them. Like a couple weeks went by and I called them and be like, hey, can I start now? And they're like, no, sorry. Like, just be patient, man. We don't have space for you right now. So I did all of that. And it was like, it just wasn't really moving forward. And around the same time, I was going to figure drawing everywhere. Like, I'm sure you guys, if you've been following my stuff, like all I ever did was go to figure drawing. And unfortunately, like, I lived in LA and there's a lot of figure drawing sessions in LA. And I was basically going every day. Like there's enough sessions in LA to fill the whole week. So I was going everywhere. I was going to Art Center. I was going to Otis. I was going to the Art Directors Guild. I was like all around town. Like you would see me at a figure drawing thing. And um, I started posting a lot of my work on Instagram. Like, and it was you know, this is what, I mean, I've been posting since like 2013, right? And up until like, this must have been 2016. That's when we graduated, right? So around 2015, 2016, um, Instagram started getting bigger and bigger. And I was just posting a lot of figure drawings. And it was getting a lot of attention because it was like, a lot of work that I was doing and I was getting better really quickly because I was going all the time and I was also taking figure drawing classes in school. So that was kind of like the thing that people knew me for. And I got a call from a company like this illustration, like head of illustration department at an ad studio saw my work and he's like, dude, this is exactly what we've been looking for. Like, we need somebody to sketch concepts for us. And you were perfect for this. And he called and like, he just like emailed me and I just showed up and he didn't even realize that I was still in school at the time. And that's like kind of the thing that I want people to start to realize too, is nobody is really trying to take a chance on a student, right? Like as a studio, it's a business, right? And it's a lot of money in both and they don't want to put it. Off. So if you're really trying to get a job, like stop expecting people to give you a chance. It's you really have to act like a professional. And, you know, for me, I was still in school, but like I've been working this whole time. I've been freelancing. I had a lot of clients. Like I already knew how to deal with people and, assignments and getting revisions and how to handle all that. So getting a job, you know, like it, it wasn't really like I broke in. It wasn't a clear line between being a student and becoming a professional. Like it was a very gradual and very slow. I was in college for seven years. Like that's how long it took me to get my first job. And yeah, I started freelancing for the studio and I just, kept working and I, after I graduated, I just kept freelancing and I get contacts for other companies. And I was, I applied to a lot of jobs too. 
and I didn't get any of those jobs I applied to. Okay. Like still to this day, I've never gotten a job I applied to. Like most of the jobs that I have is through like referrals or somebody just finding my work on the internet somewhere. And it's like, the only, like how can you control that? Like the only way you can control that is to make sure that you're consistently putting out work. Did you find your little jobs as a student through social media? Um, it was mostly referrals and like, I did, I would do a job for somebody and they would recommend me to somebody else. And like, you gotta think about like, how did that work out? Like, why would anybody recommend anybody, right? And the only reason why they would do that is if they're really happy with the work that you deliver. You know, it's like, you ever like, go to the store, you buy something and they like send you a survey and it's like, would you recommend this to your friend? And it's like, there's been so many places where you're just like, no, there's no way I'm recommending you, right? Like, and it's all about the work that you're delivering. And to me, like, it was just about finding out what people needed and giving them the way. And this is the thing we just talked about, like being more effective at the job. Also, um, there's some talk about grinding in the chat. I want to kind of bring what you're saying. I do want to say that, like, um, as far as effectiveness, yeah, like grinding, like just like grinding, like you need to be doing the right things. Like if you're just like, you know, like I said that I was just like kind of pushing paint around and I was doing that like constantly, like it's going to be slower than if you're like, you know, trying to be effective in what you're studying. Um, I don't really know how to like. Well, the, the way you get good at anything is by putting a lot of time into it. Right? And if you know, you guys know these people that are like just the prodigy child, and they're just like really, really good at things. The only difference between them and you is they started earlier, right? And because they started earlier, they have more experience than you. You know, like they might be the same age as you, but they've been doing this way longer than you've been doing it, right? So a lot, and actually a lot of those people will tell you that you don't really need to grind. And it's like, well, you didn't because you've been doing this for a long time. And I like, honestly, I didn't really have to. You need to like, no, I mean, I think you went through a period of time when you were just, I mean, when you were going, when we were in school and you were going to figure drawing constantly, that I would call a grind. But and I liked it. I enjoyed it. I, it, I didn't like beat myself but, up the whole time. Dylan, I will say as somebody that went to school with him, like before I even fully knew him or met him, I was hearing about him from other people because people knew him as the guy that would sit in class and pull out his sketchbook and just draw everybody in class. And literally like Dylan was never not drawing. So I got that from Andrew Hem. That's what the guy told me about. So I was like, I gotta do the same thing. That was the kind of work ethic that he had that got him a job before graduation. So yeah, and still like when you say like I got a job before graduation, I was in college for seven years. Like most people only spent four years in college and then it would still take them a couple of years to get a job. That, that That's really how long it took me, right? But you were in school when, like, when you got work. Yeah, and we're saying all of this, too, because the places, like, Chelsea and I, where we come from, like, we just didn't have the right resources. You know, like, classes were not available. Like, when we were in school, like, schoolism had just started, you know? And there was, like, no man DVDs. Like, that was kind of, like, all there ever was. Also, like, I mean, I personally, I don't come from a lot of money. My family's not super rich or anything. My middle class, like, I didn't have the money to go to. I really wanted to go to Cal Arts. I never got to because it was just my family and I looked at it when I was applying for colleges and we we're like, yeah, it's just it's too much money. So I had, that's where I ended up as far as like a Cal State, but I went to one of the best Cal States. So you kind of also, I mean, we're kind of lucky too that we were in California. Yeah, location is huge, I think. I, I mean, right now, I think it's changing a little bit, but. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, the online resources, like all the schools, like all the classes that we're talking about, like they're all online now anyway. So anybody can take these classes, like Brainstorm, CDA, Schoolism, like CGMA, like every, it's easy now. 
Somebody asked, and right after we answer this, I'm going to have Ehao and Lanny talk because it, we're taking two ideas. Um, somebody asked in the chat question, I'm considering going to CSULB for MFA, MA, and illustration since you and Dylan went there, but I'm into entertainment industry as well, so now I'm confused. I'm an international student graduated in engineering. Um, Long Beach is a great school if you are interested in editorial illustration slash fine art. I don't recommend going there if you are trying to get into, well, Okay, but she's no, no, no. You're right because she's also talking about an MFA. Yeah, and the master's program there is very fine. The master's program specifically is very, very fine art, and I honestly myself still consider going there for that program just for fun because <laughs> I want to get my master's still just for fun. But a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money, and also you do not need a master's to. Um, work in the industry here. I don't know how it works for people that are international. You might need that in order to get over here, but. Um, yeah, in general, master's degree is not recommended for the entertainment and art industry. Yeah. Because the skills that you need are not going to be taught in those programs. I Yeah, Long Beach is not going to teach you um, in their master's program, what you should know for the animation industry. If if you're international, you might need to have yeah for the visa. You need a visa and all this stuff. So that's Long Beach is a good um like financial uh, alternative. Yeah, it's cheaper than a lot of the other private art school, right? Because it's well, but it, yeah, it's still it's still cheaper than the private colleges. So if you need to go just for the degree, yeah, go for it. But if you're talking about like, is it gonna teach you the right things? I wouldn't recommend it. Like, you know, I would recommend brainstorm, CDA, schoolism, CGMA, like, and it's not a big commitment either, right? Like, these classes are a lot cheaper and you don't have to do the whole program. You just take the class that you need for the job that you're looking for. Um, okay, let's move on to Ehow because I wanna I wanna hear how Ehow got his job because and he yeah. recently got his job. Does he have any? It it looks like Lanny actually. Uh, oh, did he? Say he needs, he needs to. Like, this is like he needs to go. Oh, well, Lanny, Lanny, go, go, go. Hey, I was just saying <laughs> I had time if uh, if it works, but Ehow can go first. Sorry, if you want. Okay. That's okay. Oh, it's okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, we'll save the best for last, right? He wanted to go last anyway. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah, I was like, maybe we'll just run out of time, and I'll just do my little introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so hello everybody. Um, it's super cool hearing from everybody too. Like, just you know, we've obviously talked about a lot of this, but it's cool actually hearing the entire story of how everybody got into this. So for me, um, I started. Everything kind of started because when I was young, when I was nine years old, I started breakdancing. Breakdancing became my life. I thought it's what I was going to do. I put everything into it. Um, it got me into just hip hop in general. Hip hop got me into graffiti. Graffiti eventually got me into art. Art got me to, whoops, art got me to like art school and that kind of stuff. And things just kind of took off from there. And also after listening to everybody else talk, I also wanted to say kind of from the beginning, uh, my kind of secret to everything that's happened in my life, to all the success that I've had and everything, and what I really believe everybody needs to kind of be successful in this, um, is you have to enjoy it. Like, if you love something, if you love art, if you love drawing, if you love working, you're going, that love is going to do things for you and make you do things that you wouldn't do in any other situation. If you love drawing and art, you're going to practice more than anybody else. You're going to put more hours in. You're going to reach out to more people. You're going to make more connections. You're going to make more contacts. People are going to like you because they're going to see your enthusiasm. When you work on jobs, they're going to like working with you and they're going to recommend you for more places. Just every single thing that has happened has been because of that. And you know, when I talk about, oh, I was into breakdancing, I've done a ton of different things. I was a breakdancer. I was a magician. I was... Uh, tattoo artists, like all these things. And it was never about making money or trying to figure out what kind of job should I get or where would be a good place for me. It's, I pick something up. I'm like, this is fun. You know, I like doing this. So I'm going to put all of my time into it. I'm going to get really good at it. And before I know it, I'm finding ways to make money at it. 
Um, you know, I was doing street shows, break dancing at the Santa Monica Pier for eight years to pay my way through college. I was a tattoo artist for like seven years. I was a magician at restaurants. Like it's just everything has kind of just worked out because I fell in love with everything that I did. I put everything into it. And I got results from that. So I just kind of wanted to start with that as I traveled through this. But um, yeah, so uh, I got into art. I, um, you know, I was about Which seven. Was Is it? Oh, oh, you're going earlier than that. Sorry, I, I'm interrupting. He's, he's seven <laughs> years old. Seven years old. You got I'm into sorry, art. I'm seven years old. What? <laughs> Isn't that what you say? <laughs> uh, um. I, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm definitely not seven. Uh, I was I was tattooing for seven years, maybe. Oh, um, oh I, I thought you said it, you it was like seven when you were seven years old. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, definitely not seven. Um, I'd be kind, kind of cool if I was seven. I'd already be at this point and just have the rest of my life ahead of me. Uh, I'd probably be a lot more intimidating to other people. <laughs> but anyway, so I started, you know, I went to... I wanted to, t uh, I was going to move to LA from Santa Cruz to pursue arts. You know, I was still into break dancing, but I was like, you know, maybe I could find a future in art. I, I like it. Uh, could be something that I could do for a living. And I went there to go to the Art Institute in Santa Monica. I terrible experience there. I wasn't happy with any, it, it felt more like a business than a school. I just wasn't into it. Um, you know, and the main thing was it was just way too expensive. Like I did one quarter there, I finished the quarter and I was like, we don't have any, my parents were like, we don't have any more money to keep sending you here. So uh, it was a really kind of sad moment for me. It was one of those times I've had a couple, you know, times throughout my life with especially regarding art and things that I'm really passionate about where something kind of goes wrong. And I just feel I have this moment of just feeling lost for a little bit. When I found out that I, you know, I couldn't go to the art institute anymore, even though, like I said, I was a little disappointed in the school, um, I just felt like my life kind of fell off track, right? Like I had a future, I had um, a plan, I had a life, uh, I was going to, you know, I was going to get this education, I was going to be a great artist. And now what do I do? You know, what are my options? Where can I go? And I ended up going to Santa Monica Community College, which is where Dylan went, even though we never actually met while we were there. But um, I went there, you know, feeling a little bit lost. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to let this be the end of it. I'm going to get my general education here, take as many art classes as I can while I'm here, and I'm going to transfer somewhere else, you know, at Cal State or UC or something, and I'm going to make this work. So, you know, I did, I did that. I took a bunch of art classes. I got my general ed. I got to a place where I could transfer so that I could afford to you know, do the rest of my college route to get my degree, become that great artist that I wanted to be, make a living, get a job and do all that. Um, got to a point where I was ready to apply to schools and I heard good things about Cal State Long Beach. Uh, some of my teachers recommended it to me. Um, I, again, I didn't know what I wanted to do at all. It was never about what industry do I want to work on or what job do I want. It was just, I like art, you know, I want to draw, I enjoy doing this. I just want to go somewhere that's going to make me great at this. I didn't really care in what way. I just wanted to progress. So, um, again, just, I don't know why I did this, but I just applied to Cal State Long Beach. I didn't apply anywhere else, which was really dumb, especially when I heard back and I got put on the waiting list to Long Beach. And it was another one of those really depressing moments where I'm like, why did I not apply anywhere else? Like, I, I thought I had a plan again. I thought this was going to work. I was going to get in, become a great artist. Everything was going to go amazing. And then I got waitlisted. And I was like, I'm I'm stuck, you know. Um, so I, you know, I, I was in that little funk for a minute. And then I ended up coming back and I got into Long Beach. So I was like, okay, thank God I have something. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get through this. So I went to Long Beach. I majored in illustration. Um you know, I kind of like Dylan was talking about, I just put everything that I could into every project. I was the guy who would get these illustration assignments where I, you know, I'm spending like, you know, I'm working 24 hours a day, pulling all nighters every, every night, trying to do these crazy elaborate giant oil paintings for everything. And just, I, you know, I was like, I'm going to learn as much as I possibly can. I'm going to work harder than everybody else, which means I'm going to get better than everybody else, which means I'm going to, you know, not that it's a competition. I don't believe in that at all, but it was just for me to feel, you know, to feel like I was doing something on the right track. I wanted to see myself progress. Um, and I wanted to know, I wanted to 
I wanted to kind of like prove, I wanted to see how hard I was working and that I was doing everything that I could to take myself somewhere. And it was a weird thing being at Long Beach because like you guys have already heard, it's a, a little bit more focused in, well, very more focused in the editorial illustration. And not that I was against that. I just, like I said, I never thought about the job. I was always thinking about what I wanted to do, what I wanted to draw, um, just getting better in general. I, I knew that I really enjoyed um, you know, realistic drawing and painting, figurative drawing and painting. And in the this editorial illustration kind of setting, there was just so many people who were doing more like, I, I don't know, I don't want to say cartoony, but definitely stylized, flatter, watercolor, gouache, ink, um, line drawing, things like that. And it was, I don't know, it just, it felt very different from what I naturally kind of wanted to gravitate towards. I was also doing tattoos at that time and I was just really into realism. So it just, it felt strange and I didn't really know what to do. I felt a little bit lost for a time. Um, and what really set me on the path that I'm still on and that I really um, enjoyed going down was I went to a show, I went to this gallery show on the Golden Age illustrators like Dean Cornwell, Norman Rockwell, and C. Wyeth, and it just completely blew me away. Like I, everything I saw, I was like, this is amazing. Like I was already obsessed with like the Renaissance painters, Titian, uh, Michelangelo, all those guys. And seeing this, I was like, this is this is what I've been kind of waiting for. This is bridging that gap a little bit from what they were doing way back in the day to the kind of illustration that they're doing now. And this is a way that you can, you know, these are figurative narrative oil paintings, which is what I, you know, was realizing what I wanted to do, but it's illustration as well. And I was like, this, this is how I can do that. I can still do my painting. I can still do my realistic kind of work but um, in this type of way. So I just, you know, kept pushing myself, kept doing these paintings and drawings for school. And uh, I finished school. And upon finishing school, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, uh, she's from the East Coast. So we had made a plan that, she, you know, she wanted to be closer to home. So the compromise was after I graduated school, she'd stay with me until I finished school. And then once I finished, we would move out to New York because, you know, it was closer to home for her and it seemed like somewhere where I could figure my life out a little bit, my career, make a living and all that. So so we did that. And um, I worked for a little while before we left, a couple months doing tattoos and breakdance shows and all that to save up a little bit of money. But when we got to New York, again, I felt this sense of urgency, right? Because I was paying, even though I was splitting rent with my girlfriend, um, it was more money than I'd ever had to spend on rent. So that was intimidating. It was intimidating because I didn't have a job. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I was really determined to work as an artist. I didn't want to get another job. I didn't want to, you know, get work at a coffee shop or something as I was trying to find my way. I wanted to go 100% for it. I wanted to prove that all of my hard work, uh, you know, would pay off and that it would take me somewhere. And it was terrifying, right? Like at first I was just, you know, super motivated. I'm going to make this happen. Um, we got to New York, we got our place, we got settled in. And on a daily basis, my, a normal day for me was I would spend the entire day on the computer, just applying for everything, whether it was freelance jobs, um, you know, video game studios, uh, editorial illustration jobs, anything that I could possibly find, production companies, whatever, anywhere that they needed an artist, I was applying to it. And I mean, literally all day, every single day, just sending emails. And I didn't hear anything back from anybody. You know, Are you I, even like more like applying on like Craigslist and stuff, right? Like yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that, so that, that's, what, that's what I'm getting to, right? So in the beginning, I was applying everywhere didn't hear back from anybody. Just, I felt I started getting a little bit discouraged. I was like, Oh my god, like I'm not hearing anything back. Why? Why don't people want to hire me? Um, and it's very, very obvious. Now looking back, I didn't have a portfolio. I had a bunch of you know, these kind of okay looking elaborate oil paintings that nobody was gonna hire me to be like a character designer or something like that, which were these jobs that I was applying to. I was like, oh, well, they can see that I know how to paint. So they must assume I know character design and environments and you know editorial and all this other stuff I'm applying for. But obviously that's not the case. So what was working at that time, um, a small part of what I was doing was applying to Craigslist jobs. And I was getting hits from the Craigslist jobs. They weren't good jobs. They weren't well-paying. They weren't uh, for great clients a lot of the time. 
but I was getting them. So because that was working, I slowly moved uh, the amount of time that I was spending on Craigslist searches to where that became the majority of what I would do. So every day started with going on Craigslist, searching everywhere in the United States um, because that you could work remotely. And I would just apply to, you know, a hundred jobs, a couple hundred jobs every day, every week, whatever, but always constantly applying and applying to that many jobs. I would get whatever number of jobs from that. And it would be enough for me to basically, you know, work 14 hours a day, every day to, uh, you know, barely make enough money to pay rent, be able to afford like my bagel in the morning, my little $4 sandwich or whatever. Um, and that went on for a while. And that was, it was a really tough time. You know, I'm a very optimistic, energetic person. And, you know, even at the time I was being very optimistic about it, but there's this thing in the back of your head while that's happening where it's like, how long is this going to go on for? You know, it's like, I'm barely making any money. My wife's managing restaurants in the city and, you know, she wants to go out. She wants to do all these things. I can't afford to do anything. I'm working every single day, all day. I'm just, you know, I don't feel confident in myself. It was really tough. And, um, and, and the biggest, the biggest thing with that is just, there's no end in sight. You have no idea when this is going to end. Like it could literally change overnight. You could get one email that night that says you got a job, like a real job and your entire life has changed, but you have no idea when that's going to come. It could be 10 years, 20 years, it could be the next day. Um, and that's, that's tough, you know, but what I kept telling myself and what I really believe is you know, it's if I put the work in, if I work as hard as I can, um, I continue building my portfolio. I continue taking these jobs where I'm learning to work digitally more. I'm building my portfolio. I'm trying a lot of different types of jobs. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting the work right. I'm getting the portfolio and I'm getting the skills that I need. I'm building everything up, and it's just a matter of time before somebody hires me. Right? There's people all over the place art directors all over who need artists. It's not that we need them. They need us just as bad. They have these projects that they need to finish or they need to pitch or they need, you know, the artwork to make this happen. They're desperately looking for the artist who can fulfill their vision. So all I have to do is prove to them, show them the work that shows I can do what they need and get it in front of the right person's eyes who needs it. And there's no reason why they shouldn't hire me, right? That's all that that's really if you think about it simply, that's all there really is to it. Show them that you can do what they need, what they need done. And why wouldn't they hire you? Right? If, as long as it's like everyone said at the right time, you know, it's, it's for the project they're working on, it's style, it's all the stuff they need. But if you can fulfill their needs, they need you not just you needing them. Um, so, you know, I kept that in my mind, I kept working, building my portfolio, trying things. And eventually, I ended up getting, um, I never got any of these storyboard jobs on Craigslist, because I didn't have a portfolio, even though I was applying, but eventually somebody gave me a chance, right? They're like, you know, hey, I had a storyboard artist, but he's kind of like not doing well on this. I know you don't really know how to do this. I can't really pay you. I give you like a hundred bucks or something, but I can kind of like teach you and help show you what to do and give you feedback. So I took it, right? And I spent like a week and a half, two weeks on this project that should have taken me like a day or two. Um, you know, didn't make really any money off of it, but I got one piece in my portfolio because I did this work for him. I got one piece in my portfolio now as a storyboard. I got a little bit of feedback. I learned a little bit about it. And then all of a sudden, since I had that one piece, I started getting hits when I was applying on Craigslist to storyboard jobs. So um, and, and I decided at that point that storyboarding was a direction that I wanted to go. And I was so all over the place taking all these different jobs. I decided I needed to pick one direction, focus on that direction and really, you know, build myself up in that area instead of trying to spread myself thin all over everywhere. And what actually made me make that decision was I looked at, you know, some of these storyboard artists. One of my favorite of all time is uh, a guy named Dan Milligan, who's unbelievable i love his work i you know i still studied and learned from him but i you know i'd see people like him and i look at their work and i'd be like i didn't even know storyboards could look like this like some of this looks like finished concept art some of these look like you know the paintings that the golden age illustrators were doing if i could make a living doing this that that would be amazing you know so i, I kept pushing for it i kept learning um with that piece of my portfolio I was getting more jobs and I was building my portfolio up even more and I was getting more and more work. 
And um, pretty soon uh, I, I applied to an agency, a storyboard agency, and they called me up. They said, uh, you know, we like your work. We think we could sell it. We want to embellish your portfolio a little bit more, just, you know, get more samples and things, but we work with you. I started working with them for about three months. And at this point, it had been about nine months since I graduated. So that was the that was the span of doing all these kind of odd jobs and everything, getting to this point of actually working for an agency. And in that moment, when I got that call, my life changed, you know, like that endless kind of opportunity that uh, like not knowing how long it was going to be just like that, everything changed. The amount of money that I made literally went up by like a hundred times. Um, wasn't just, I wasn't just trying to stretch everything, work 15 hours a day, making like a quarter an hour or whatever anymore. Um, and, and it happened. I started working for them. I had a little, you know, I was getting work, but it wasn't like every day or anything. So I started applying a couple more places and then um, ended up working for the agency that I'm now with today. But, um, but that's basically how I got to where I am. And I've been working with them since like 2015 or something. So, or maybe 2016. And, you know, I started since then even just teaching. I wrote a book. I started teaching at CGMA. Um, you know, I think that's another thing is that, and this goes back to the whole loving what you do and putting everything you can into it. This isn't just like, oh, I needed to get a job. So this is an end point for me. Um, I, I needed to make money, you know, I needed to make a living, I needed to be successful with this, but it's never about getting somewhere to be at an end point. Like, the point is to keep going, you know, now that I'm here, it's like, great, I'm, I'm happy, I'm getting tons of work, I'm doing, like, it's very fulfilling what I'm doing, I'm enjoying my work, but where do I go from here? You know, what kind of projects do I want to do next? Do I want to move in a different direction? Uh, can, maybe I could write a book, maybe I could teach, maybe I could do this or that, like, it's constantly, you know, there's no end you're always pushing forward and even if you don't have the job yet i feel like that has to be the mentality like if you're going to make in this type of industry that there is a lot of work like you guys were saying we say all the time like artists looking for jobs jobs looking for artists and people aren't finding each other you know there is work out there a lot of it but you're competing against a lot of people who are really talented who have this kind of love for what they do and put in this enormous amount of work and effort and I think I really think it's something that you have to have if you want to try to be successful and make it in this industry. But um, that's yeah, that's kind of my story. I think Lanny wins at the craziest stories. <laughs> Lanny has one of my favorite stories. <laughs> it didn't feel that crazy at the time, but I mean, and looking no, back at it too, huh? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh well, no, I was just gonna say too. Looking back at it, I mean. Now, like, like that, that um, hard time that I was having trying to, you know, no end in sight and everything as, as hard as that was, that's like one of the most rewarding things ever, like in my life, like thinking back about, about those times, I remember I was like, oh, it's Wednesday, that means I get to go buy a $6 burrito today for lunch, like that was huge for me, I didn't have to get like the $4 sandwich or something, <laughs> like knowing that you went through that stuff that's what makes you appreciate where you are now you know like those hard days those that hard work the tough times like you, that's great you know it sucks at the time but you need that and that's what you look back on and really have those fond memories of yeah and i i like that you talked about how like the job is not an end goal like i know a lot of people when you are trying to get in it's like that's all you're thinking about is trying to get the job. But it's like, once you do, you're going to still be doing this for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Like, yeah, um, I, I think it's good to, to mention that. Um, I remember Dylan told me when I was trying to get work, he was like, don't make the job your, your ultimate goal. Like, just mm -hmm. make getting the job your ultimate goal. Like, have a goal for after you get the job. And, you know stubborn me i'm like no i want i just need to get the job <laughs> and then i got yeah. the job and where i am at now i'm kind of like because because you will get the job eventually you will get it <laughs> but it's kind of okay what now and that's almost another <laughs> or you don't get the job and you're still gonna have to live so like the job is not everything it's yeah it's i mean it is a huge thing but, but i feel like we need another panel of after what happens after you get the job <laughs> actually we should we should yeah i doing that. need that too Definitely. it's like you know like, i'm so lost now. money <laughs> is not everything but it is when you don't have it yeah mm -hmm. right?
Yeah. Well, and and also too, it's like once you get the job, I mean, like, the job isn't going to be what you think it's going to be. It's not like you made and you're going to be happy the rest of your life because you're doing the same thing every single day for the rest yeah. of your life. Like the great thing about art is that there's there's no end. You keep getting better. Oh, I've you know, first of all, you're never going to master any one thing, right? There's always going to be further to go. But you know, say you quote unquote master or you know uh rendering right well now there's color now there's composition now there's this now there's that it, it keeps going and it's the same thing with a job like you don't want like say you you know you do storyboards you do storyboards every day you have a blast doing it but after like a year you know do you still want would you still want to do the same thing every day and that's what i love about my job is it's not about the job it's about i want to draw what i want to draw i want to have fun i want to learn new things constantly i want to you know i want to play with line work then i want to play with shading then i want to play with composition then and that my jobs keep changing um, i'm focusing on different aspects on different jobs so it's keep it keeps on pushing me it keeps me trying different things and that excitement about that and that constant need to learn and you know i'm still taking classes and practicing and doing whatever i can i mean i can't tell you how many times i've been at a job where they hire me as a storyboard artist and i'm just working with them like, oh hey i started taking this map painting painting class or hey i can also do um environments or characters or uh, concept art or whatever and i show them some stuff and they're like dude, that's all. Yeah, let's hire him to do this too. And, I, and the job extends and I get all this work from it. Um, and that's, that's me. That's me being excited. That's them seeing my excitement. That's, uh, you know, that's me talking to them, putting myself out there, not just going to the desk, doing the job and going home. You know, it really is more than that, or it can be in it. It can be a good thing. I think this excitement is why you've gotten this far too. Like people want to work with you because they want somebody who is like excited about doing the job, you know, instead of somebody that's like, I'm only doing this because I need money. Dude, hey, all, my, my favorite story I always tell on that too is like, I remember the first time I ever worked at Nickelodeon. And so I, I've said already, I'm also a magician and a break dancer. So I go into Nickelodeon and, you know, I'm, I start doing some magic tricks and I start doing some backflips. And they were so psyched on it. They brought me around the entire office to show <laughs> everybody. And I, I, I didn't even work that day. They, they just brought me around everywhere to show everybody tricks. <laughs> and then, you know, and then I work, I work in other places the next, like, month or so, and then I get hired for another job at Nick. I go back to Nickelodeon. They, they hey, Lanny's here. Hey, come, come here. Yeah. They, they bring me around the whole office. Back like, that. like, the stuff like that happens. You know, people do hire you because they like you. I, I got a job as a matte painter as I was taking my, my first matte painting class at CGMA. And, you know, the director told me, he's like, oh, we have a guy we usually use for matte painting, but you know, we really like working with you. So yeah, we'll just wow. hire you to do it. And we'll, you know, you, it doesn't matter. You can be a little slow. We yeah. can help you out as you're going, but that's, that's awesome. You know, that really happens. And that's also, if you're somebody who's looking for work, there are people out there who aren't even as good as you, who might be getting some of these jobs just because they're networking and they're likable people. Being, work, being more effective, being like, uh, can I work with somebody who's easy to work with? I, I can, I can vouch for that. I personally know people that are, that's me, are really good. No, it's not. <laughs> but people who are better than me, but they hire me because I'm easy. People yeah. will hire you if you're easier to work with than, than the person that's, like, really good, but, like, <laughs> really hard. Okay, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta move on because we're running out of time and e house still needs to go. <laughs> Thanks, Lanny. That was yeah. wild. That was the wildest story. An epic adventure. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, is e how here? Yeah, I'm here. So, Ihao, how did you, um, so you, you went to Art Center. How did you, why did you go to Art Center? Yeah, I went to Art Center, um, cause like, I, uh, mainly because all the good teachers were like there, like Peter Han and Will Weston. So there were a lot of good, uh, students. How, how did you know about these guys? Um, I threw Instagram. Oh, Instagram. So you were just yeah. following people on Instagram. Yeah. And then you, what did, uh, what is your major at Art Center? Oh, uh, my major was uh, illustration. And uh, what did you want to do? Uh, I, I really wanted to do, uh, uh, like, write a splash art because, um, because, um, uh, uh, I was really inspired by, uh, Jeremy Aninos. Uh, he was, well, we attended school together. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, we, we, we met each other the first day on the orientation. And yeah, and then ever since I was really inspired by him. And uh, yeah, when he got an intern at Riot, and then that's really inspired me to work hard and uh, try to get a job at Riot. So then you, um, you apply to Riot, right? And you got, you got to, like, you were one of the finalists for the internship. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. It was, this it was, is when, yeah, we, I, I met you, like, this is around the same time when I started talking to you, and you were applying, and did you get the first internship that you applied to? Yeah, I, I think uh, we're five people, five, five, five final, finalists, but they canceled it due to some uh, program issue. Like, uh, they, they don't have the time to do it, and plus COVID, so, yeah. So COVID happened, so you, they like canceled the, the internship, pretty much. Yeah. And then what? Like you applied again the next year. Yeah, I applied again. Uh, did you get it the second time? No, I I did not. Uh, it was close, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, I I really like, I I which I took a mentorship with Dylan and Chelsea and uh to for the internship and uh. Yeah, I got a really good. I got a pretty good portfolio, but uh, it was just a really competitive year. So, uh, yeah, it was it was challenging, but uh, I was just try. I would always try again next year. But it was it's great. I got a I got a lot of help from them and, and like uh, and work too. So, um, I'm pretty motivated to do more work. And, uh, so you didn't get the internship, like you apply. The first year got to the final, didn't get it. Apply the second year, got to the final again, and still didn't get it. Yeah, because um, you know, uh, uh, there were less than less spots due to COVID. I think. Yeah, and I, I saw that, that um, the finalists for the second year that you applied, and like people got a lot better the second time around than the year before. It almost seems like it got harder. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then, so, uh, yeah. So you were, after that, you got contacted by, was it Zach Reitz? Yeah, Zach Reitz. That's uh, Impetus, right? That's his studio? Yeah. And he hired you, and what, what kind of work are you doing for them? Um, I was working for, uh, they, they had their, the Ryan team, and the work on the, Team Fight Tactics, you mobile doing version. work for Riot anyway. Yeah, I was I was uh working for uh, Zach is working for Riot and Tencent. So yeah, so it was the job was uh we had to paint splash art for the uh the characters and uh we we get to learn a lot from the Riot art directors with like uh getting the likeliness of the characters colors uh to match the characters. Uh it was pretty hard but I learned a lot. Uh, from Zach and uh, all the art directors and give me paint overs. Yeah, I really enjoy the work. Um, you were able to get that job because um, because I remember Zach posting, because I, I know that he recently left DreamWorks. He was directing a movie at DreamWorks, and then he left to start his own studio. And I think he posted like um, like a job opening or something on Twitter or Instagram? Is that how you, did you apply to that? No, I think Zach contacted me through uh, Instagram. Okay. So you didn't even know. He knew about your work. Yeah, yeah, so, he, yeah. And, okay, like, I, I brought Yihao on today because, like, I'm hearing the story because, yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen Yihao's work. He's really good. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no, not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Post his work, like, and when Ehao applied to the internship and got to the finalists, I was like, yeah, of course, it's like he would, he would, but then like he did. I like, keep telling you that like it wasn't because you were not good. It was just like there was a bunch of other people that were also applying and 
they were all so good. And it's just, there's just not enough jobs to go around. And you didn't get it the first time. And the second time COVID happened, like, it's just so unfortunate. And it, it wasn't because of your skill level. And like the proof to that is because you ended up working with, and you ended up working for Riot, like a Riot project anyway. So like, clearly you were good enough. And it's just like, for the people that are listening, like sometimes it's just, again, like this is the point that we've been kind of banging today. It's like, it's not about being the best, right? It's just about like fitting the perfect job that they're looking for. But I mean, also like not giving up just because you didn't get something or like you can always do more to improve and make things easier the next time around. And sometimes too, like um, your work just isn't the right fit for maybe a studio that you really want to work for. I really wanted to work for Nickelodeon, like when I graduated. Um, but yeah, Lenny was doing backflips and so that, like he took the job. He took the job over me because he was way cooler. <laughs> But, um, my work just didn't look like Nickelodeon, so and it still doesn't. I I don't I don't think I'll ever hire there, honestly, um, because it's just not the right style. So and I don't I hate to bring up style, so it's a whole other. But um, I think it, you have to think about like you're gonna land where you fit. The job will find you, so don't get too stressed out about that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Eo. Yeah, no problem. Okay, should we wrap up? It's been two hours. Five fifty-nine. So we'll wrap it up. Um, we don't really have time to answer questions unless you know any of anyone wants to stay. And you know what? Um, because we we have a a design challenge coming up at seven, and that's an hour from now. And we have to go eat and take a break. And charge our computer because the, the power is today. I forgot right? But um, I mean, if you guys attend that, we can answer questions there while we're going. That's fine with me. But what's happening tonight? Sounds good to me. Too. Yeah, in an hour is the design challenge. So uh, yeah. we'll post, we'll post uh, the prompt. And we can just, you know, spend an hour or two drawing something and, and we'll... I thought there was one today. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, you. so... Someone also said, can you tell us the best Discord for aspiring? It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> We're, you guys, we, I, I don't know if you know uh, what resolution is. Is, but we started resolution as a mentorship originally with me, Dylan, and um, the friend Ben Gariga. And Ben isn't doing it with us anymore, but Dylan and I um, kind of took over and we opened it up. And we're not doing mentorships at the moment, but we have plans in the future for other exciting things. And um, this is just a space for now for you to connect with other people and learn, like learn as much as you can, network with other people, become friends with the people in here. And I truly think that this is the best space to be in if you're trying to come up and trying to get work and learn. Yeah, like, like we, all the channels, if you guys look, like it's meant to help you. You know, like we have, there's hard share critique requests, there's resources, there's references, there's jobs posting, like things that you would need. Excuse me. And like, if you have any questions, like we have our discussion, like we're here to help. And if you like all the stories today, we've all had the struggle and, and like we understood how hard it was. And like Camille was touching on this, that like, not having the resources the resources and the exposure is a big deal so like being around artists being around the people who know about the industry and other people that are also trying to do the same thing that really helps so take advantage of the discord and you know we'll try to be on as much as we can this is not one of those where like the discord because 
they're so popular. Are you referring to a certain person when you say that? <laughs> I will say Chelsea. I have a Chelsea is being so jealous. Real quick, real quick, Dad, and we'll be back here at seven, uh, which is in an hour, seven PST. Um, it did it go away. Thank you. Can you guys still hear? Oh, it oh, like froze yeah, for a second. Are you guys hear us? Yeah, I think cut out. But I okay, I it. think we should wrap it up because yeah. things are dying over here. Um, but yeah, we will be back at seven for the design challenge. Then it's going to be a really cool one. So we'll come back and we'll be in the workshop channel yeah, under LVX. And I'll try to get this recording up on Twitch, but we lost a good portion of it earlier, so like sorry about that. My entire story. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to hear Come back that part. Come back to our talk tomorrow. I know. Yeah. Do it again tomorrow. No, I'm just okay. kidding. Oh, yeah, and then we have a panel tomorrow, by the way, guys. Uh, our